Welcome back. Will there be a political prize for the slow, lackluster federal response to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico? No, we're not talking about in Puerto Rico. We're talking about here in Florida. Four months after Maria devastated the island, tens of thousands of homes and businesses remain without power. Tens of thousands of Puerto Ricans have now moved to Florida. Puerto Ricans who lean Democratic, and many Puerto Ricans remain livid about President Trump's response to the hurricane. If they register vo to vote, they can vote. And what will the impact be on here in Florida and on the Sun Coast? Joining us for more is Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New College, and Jacob Ogles, political editor of SRQ Magazine. This really is, gentlemen, the, the talk of the political world in, uh, in Florida about the impact, but my question is, is it gonna be a statewide and regional effect and will it impact the Suncoast? Jacob. I think it's going to impact every part of the state of Florida, but some areas more than others. Certainly we're seeing the population that's relocating from Puerto Rico going first to metropolitan areas like Orlando and to Miami. But I think that you're going to see people spreading out over the state of Florida over time, particularly the ones that choose to relocate here permanently. You know, the, uh, the Orlando Sentinel reported that more than 239 Puerto Ricans have arrived in Florida since October th uh, 3rd. That's a huge number, Frank. 239,000? Yeah. Uh, that's a huge number. Uh, and, you know, in the Orlando area, we know has been kind of uh, migrating Democrat. Uh, three out of the yeah. four congressional districts in the Orlando area are now represented by Democrats. But I guess a, a lot of the questions are, you know, are, is there any sign of Puerto Ricans uh, moving to the Sun Coast, the Tampa Bay area, and so forth? Tampa Bay area, yes. Uh, Sun Coast, not in big numbers as of yet. Getting back to your question, uh, the impacts um, of migration from Puerto Rico and the feelings that the Puerto Rican community have with respect to the president's response uh, to Hurricane Maria, I think that's going to have a lasting, potentially structural impact on politics in Florida over a 10 year period. However, I'm not so sure it's going to show up dramatically in 2018. It's okay. going to take a little time. Well, let's talk about this a little bit. I do believe we have some video from the president's uh, visit to Puerto Rico right after Maria. Uh, and him, th there we go. And, you know, there, a lot of, has been made of this video of the president throwing uh, paper towels to the crowd there. Uh, if you ask, uh, you know, folks at FEMA, the, the president and the, and the federal government did everything it could do, given the logistical nightmare of responding to a hurricane like that. Um, but on the other hand, you know, you did see a lot of uh, other Puerto Ricans, including the mayor of San Juan, really t take exception about the, the, the pace of the federal response. And that remains to this day. Jacob, uh, we often say that Puerto Ricans lean Democrat, but not all Puerto Ricans vote Democrat. I know I have a lot of Puerto Rican friends who vote, vote Republican. Oh, yeah, and there's a lot of socially uh, conservative members of that community that very well could break Republican. I think one of the things that stands in real obvious juxtaposition, though, when you mentioned the federal response with Puerto Rico, you know, 31% of the island of Puerto Rico is still without power right now. We are in an area that was hit by a hurricane, not as powerful a hurricane, but we got all of our power back at 100% a long time ago. Even the areas that were flooded with Hurricane Harvey got that back a long time ago. So that's the problem with the federal response. Yes, there's logistical challenges on an island that don't exist with the mainland uh, storm-struck area, but you still can't get over that difference. Frank, we, we only have a few seconds left here, but are both parties here in Sarasota and statewide aware of and, and trying to plan, game plan for these folks coming into the area? I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe the Democrats a little bit more so than uh, the Republicans. But as Jacob said, there, there's, you know, they're not done yet. We're going to be pulling back FEMA resources. And h how many lines did you hear about last night in the in the State of the Union? Right, and they just announced uh, today that they are pulling back FEMA resources from Puerto Rico. We are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more on Puerto Ricans moving to Florida and the potential impact on our elections. Right there, we check the first alert weather. 
Welcome back. Tens of thousands of Puerto Ricans are relocating to Florida in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, and that could have a huge impact on elections in Florida. But does that include the Sun Coast? Joining us for more is Frank Alcock, a political science professor at New College, and Jacob Ogles, political editor of SRQ Magazine. We know on a statewide basis that people are taking this seriously. Governor Rick Scott, who may run for senator against Bill Nelson, could not be going out and welcoming Puerto Ricans to Florida any more than he has. He knows, Frank, what's at stake here. Absolutely. Uh, there are a lot of numbers floating around um, with respect to what this um, migration wave might look like. Um, I think over time uh, it, it could look substantial. I think a half a million uh, new Puerto Rican citizens moving into you know, for Puerto Rico over a, a, potentially a year plus is a possibility. But there's a difference between simply traveling here, deciding to stay, establishing residency, getting registered, uh, and then getting mobilized politically. And right. So that takes some time. But if you look at the broader context, Puerto Rico was in a lot of trouble before Hurricane Maria. They are deeply in debt. It's affecting the economy there. And now you have what did you say? Over 30 percent of, of yeah. Uh, homes and businesses yeah, yeah. still not power restored. Uh, and so I would imagine that all those things put together may make it more likely that Puerto Ricans will just stay here in Florida and elsewhere. For a period of time, I think that's the case. But one thing that I think you need to remember, particularly with politically motivated voters, is that they have causes that they'd be abandoning back home. For example, we're talking about these Puerto Ricans coming here right now. Well, they have their own fight about the finances for the country that they'd be walking away from. They have fights about things like statehood that they are very invested in. They've been fighting those battles for years on the island. And to permanently relocate to the state of Florida would largely mean abandoning those regional issues in the country that they call home. Well, a couple of things here. Number one, have you been looking at, in, in terms of Hispanic voting on the Sun Coast and elsewhere, Puerto Rican uh, voting numbers on, on the Sun Coast, uh, are they good, predictable voters? I think um, uh, Puerto Rican voters are similar to the Hispanic community, uh, more broadly speaking. And they do not vote um, at the same rate as the African American community or, or, or Caucasian white uh, Americans, which might be good news for Republicans on one hand, but on the other hand, uh, they're not fully, their full potential in terms of mobilization has not been realized. And so you really can't just take past history and project it uh, into the future. And I would we already have like a million Puerto Ricans in this state prior to this wave that's coming on. And so getting back to your question about Rick Scott, he's well aware in such close, tight elections that we have in this state. Um, the, the issue of Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rican community, and what's happening in the wake of Hurricane Maria could very well swing a statewide election. Yeah. Well, Al Alan, I can tell you, in Sarasota County in the November elections, Hispanic turnout was under 14 percent. That's the lowest group, that's the lowest turnout for any racial demographic we had in Sarasota County. Okay. In the city elections, it was under 4 percent, again, the lowest of any racial demographic okay. in Sarasota. Let's make some uh, assumptions that are going to result in the big question that I always wanted to ask. Let's say at this stage Puerto Ricans are really motivated because they're really angry about the, the, uh, the federal response. They, they're not too happy with the president. Why aren't the uh, high IQ Democrats who think of strategically trying to get wealthy uh, Hispanic or Puerto Rican business owners to relocate to Bradenton? or Lakeland for that matter, and try to attract folks to live here because the Democrats do not have a great track record of winning elections around here. And if you want to change that, you got to change the landscape, Frank. I think, um, first, with respect to the people uh, that are moving over from Puerto Rico, I'm not sure uh, the political calculus uh, is the determining factor of where they're going to set up and relocate. That said, I think there are a number of very, very good um, economic, social, a number of reasons um, uh, for this particular area, the broader Tampa Bay area, to be welcoming and so uh, with respect to the Puerto Rican community. And then once you're pulling people in, I think the opportunities to mobilize that, uh, that, that community politically are there. And so I think you're going to see it. Um, I think uh, Orlando, the I-4 quarter in particular, um, uh, but a lot of that area, it, it's a swing area. It's going to have an impact there. There's a lot of the community that's moving into southeast Florida, but that's already Democratic. Um, I think 
in a Republican leaning areas where you have Hillsborough County coming down into Sarasota, that's the area where this community over time uh, might make a difference. It's just not going to happen really quickly. I know that, but both Republicans and Democrats are always looking to the next election and wondering what the impact will be. But, you know, one of the things that happens after every presidential election, you look at that big electoral college map and you wonder, boy, if Democrats just left California and moved to Kansas and Texas, well, then, boy, we'd never have uh, those states in play again. But that's not why people make decisions on where to live. They make decisions on where to live where there's a cultural community that they want to be a part of, where there's jobs that they know that they can get work. These are the things that motivate people's decisions. So it's not like the Democratic Party can just say, hey, all these Puerto Ricans, let's make sure they move into swing districts. That's not how decisions are made. The other thing, what are we dealing with in terms of major political issues in this area? Affordable, attainable housing? Well, that's not going to be promising to people who are basically refugees from their homeland because they don't have power and they desperately need to go somewhere where they can empower their family again. So what are you going to do? You know, f let's look at it from the Republican side. I know that uh, some of our Republican friends, when we did shows recently on increasing turnout among African American voters, say that Republicans want uh, an opportunity to make the case that it's the Republican Party and Republican ideals that best suit voters, whether they're in the African American community, Hispanic community, Puerto Rican community. Oh, I think I, I would agree. And I, I do think the, uh, the Puerto Rican community in particular, Hispanic community, but more generally, they're really issue-oriented voters. I don't think anybody can simply expect fealty from that group. You have to earn uh, their votes. And so the opportunity is there for individual Republican candidates and then the Republican Party in general to make their case to these voters. But it is certainly not, the president is not helping their cause when he continues to you know, to treat even American citizens as second-class citizens, and I think that has a rippling effect, not only with the Puerto Rican community, but the broader Hispanic well, community. Well, that was my, my next question, because you can't generalize any, everyone from uh, Hispanic descent here, but you're, you're, you're kind of saying that you see uh, some kind of connections between Puerto Ricans and, and uh, Hispanics in Florida from South America and elsewhere. I think they're individual uh, communities with different sets of issues and concerns uh, that can be spoken to politically, but as the, if the President of the United States is going to treat them all the same um, and not in a good way based upon some perception that they're, they're not, you know, full-fledged American citizens, uh, then I think they might start acting uh, Jacob, more we, unified. We only have a couple seconds left here, but how active is the Hispanic community in politics in the Sarasota Manatee area? You talked about their, uh, their election performance here, but are there, there folks out there who are very political active? There certainly are individuals in both parties. You know, there's immigrants that are very important fundraisers for the Republican Party in the area. There's a caucus of Hispanic voters in the Democratic area that's extremely uh, mobile and always trying to, to get more action going on. Uh, so I think that there's people making a play for these voters for sure. All right, we have to take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. And our guest joining us right now for final thoughts. I'm going to ask you two similar but different questions. And Jacob, I'm going to start with you. Will Puerto Ricans relocating to the Sun Coast have an impact on the midterm elections, yes or no? The midterms, I sort of doubt it's going to be any sort of meaningful effect. What's going to matter is if people come here, spend a number of years in the area, and become involved in local politics. Midterms aren't really the time when that's going to happen. Maybe by 2020. Well, that was my next question, Frank. By 2020, will the number of Puerto Ricans relocating both to Florida and to the Sun Coast have an impact on our elections, our election landscape? I think so. By 2020, I do think so. I think uh, that there'll be time there um, uh, to, again, residency, uh, registration, mobilization, uh, outreach activities. Uh, and, and right now, I, I'm uh, barring, again, a dramatic change in course on the part of a president that can't stop showing contempt uh, for this community, I do think uh, that resource, those, that population will be tapped into, and they're going to have a pretty big impact come 2020. J Jacob, Republicans would say that uh, the president is reaching out to that community and that the values that he's expressing on, whether it's a matter of, of families or 
uh, you know, whether it's uh, abortion rights, some of those, uh, those other types of family issues are more in line to the way that many Puerto Ricans think. Well, of course, there's a good play that Republicans have always been able to make in terms of social conservatives. Many minority communities, very much the Hispanic community, has had a lot of social conservative foundation to it. The biggest th issue, though, with this president is uh, that he is allowing white nationalists to rebrand the Republican Party. That's not good for any type of minority outreach. And unfortunately, that's where we have to leave it. Gentlemen, thank you very much. But before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on the House <coughs> District 72 debate. We had Democratic candidate Margaret Good, Libertarian Allison Foxhall, and Republican James Buchanan right here at the trapezoid to make their case on why they should be our next state representative. And I asked them a number of questions on the issues ranging from gun control to abortion, education, and climate change. Change. We went to Facebook to hear what some of you had to say about the debate, and Christine says, Buchanan stands great on his own. Allison looked as if she had no clue what was going on, and the debate was between Good and Buchanan. But Kevin says, Allison has my vote. She is someone who has my best interest at heart. Nick says, Foxhall, B minus. Good, B plus. Buchanan, D. I would have failed him. But his compelling full backstory really spoke to my needs as a citizen of the district. And Denise says, it was an amazing debate. If you didn't get a chance to see it live, watch the replay, it just might change your mind. I know it did mine. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can pa watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TVs, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or My Sun Coast. We want to thank both our guests for being here tonight. Frank Alcock is a political science professor at New College, and Jacob Ogles is political editor of SRQ Magazine.